Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com. And in this video, we're going to discuss saving and loading player data so that our player can keep their experience and have all their data and droids that they've captured be persistent even after they leave the game. It's actually not terrible to set up, so let's dive right into it. The first thing we're going to want to do is create a couple of data representation classes. So here in the scripts folder for the player, I'm going to add a script. So I'm going to right click on the scripts folder, go to create C sharp script, and I'm going to make a script called player data. And then I'm going to do the same thing for droid. So on the droids folder, I'm going to right click, create C sharp script, droid data. And then I'm going to double click and open the player data file that we just created a second ago. Now the point of this class of this player data class is I need it to be serializable so that we can easily turn it into data to save. So we're going to get rid of mono behavior because extending from mono behavior and serializing the class can cause some weird issues and we want to avoid that. And then above the public class player data, I'm going to say square bracket serializable. And then I'm going to get rid of the contents of this class. So just wipe out the start and update functions. All we need in here are some variables and a single constructor to represent the class so that we can use this when we go to save our player. So let's create a private int xp equals zero. Well, really, we don't even need to initialize these values. So let's just create private int xp, private int required xp, private int level base, private int level or LVL, private list of game object droids equals, and I guess we're not initializing that, so we'll leave it alone. And then we're going to set a few getters. So we'll need one for the experience. And I'm just going to make this a one liner or an inline. And then we need public int required XP. And that's going to be a getter as well. And I'm just going to let my IDE, my IDE handle these for me. So we need a getter for the level base. And then we need a getter for the level. And a getter for the droids. And I'm going to turn all of these getters into inline statements just to help keep my code base clean. and get rid of the spaces in between them. OK, cool. Then I just need a basic constructor. So we're going to say public player data. And we're going to accept a player object as a parameter. Now, you may have noticed that this class looks a lot like the player class. That is 100% on purpose. It's just a data representation without all the fluff of being a Unity game object so that we can easily save and load it using Unity's built-in functions. So all we're going to do in this constructor is set each of these fields equal to their equivalent in the player class. So we're going to say xp equals player.xp. And then required 
XP equals player dot required XP. Level base equals player dot level base. Level equals player dot level. And then for now, just for representational purposes, I'm going to say droids equals player dot droids. But we're going to do something with this, so we'll come back to this later. And I'm going to leave a comment that says needs serialization because the droids are game objects and they're going to have the exact same problem that we're having with the player class. So we're going to need to fix that. But beyond that, we're done here. So let's save. Head back to Unity. And we're going to go do the exact same thing for the droids class. And the quicker way to do this is I'm going to double click on the droid class. And I'm going to grab all of its fields. I'm going to copy it. And then we're going to go back to Unity. And I'm going to double click on droid data. And that should now be in our be open in our IDE. And I'm going to get rid of the mono behavior class, which droid data by default extends from. Get rid of the start and update functions. And then above public class droid data, just write in square bracket and serializable. And then I'm just going to paste in all of those fields that we saw in our droid class. I'm going to get rid of the serialized fields. So just delete them one by one going down. And then I'm going to get rid of these default assignments. Because we will not need them. And in place of the audio clip, we're actually going to use a string. And the reason is, that's going to allow us to save the name of the cry sound. So now we just need getters for each of these. So we'll have a, a getter for spawn rate. So public float spawn rate, and then in the brackets, get, and then another set of brackets, return spawn rate. And then we need a getter for catch rate. Same thing. Pack also gets a getter. Same thing. Fence gets a getter. Make a getter for HP. And a getter for cry sound. OK, now that extends way down there. And this is especially cases like this are where inline declarations really come in handy. And this is all personal preference. You don't have to do this. I just like my code to be a little more compact. So now that I've put those all on their own lines, I'm going to delete the spaces in between. Cool, good deal. And then I'm going to say public droid data, where we can pass in a droid called droid. So now that we have a constructor for droid data, we're just going to fill in the blanks. And we're going to say spawn rate equals droid dot spawn rate. Catch rate equals droid dot catch rate. Attack equals droid dot attack. Defense equals droid dot defense. HP equals droid dot HP. And cry sound equals droid dot cry sound dot name. Now it looks like we never set a getter for the cry sound, so we'll fix that here in just a second, and then it won't be a problem. But we're going to go ahead and save this, because with that we're done. So let's head back to Unity. And real quick, we'll handle that with the droid class. So double click on the droid script under models droids. And we're just going to go make a getter for the cry sound. 
So public pry sound or public audio clip rather pry sound with a capital C get return pry sound. Perfect. And I'm just going to leave those alone for now. I'm not going to waste your time cleaning them up. So let's head back to Unity. And I'm going to double click on the Droid Data class to reopen that in my IDE and just make sure that that error went away, which it did. Perfect. Cool. Now that we've got all of that set up, we are going to go back to our Player Data class and update the droid info. Since we don't really want this to be a list of game objects anymore, we are gonna go ahead and make this a list of droid data. And we're gonna update the getter as well. And then down here where we're trying to assign this, we're actually gonna turn this into a for each loop. So we're gonna say for each, Droid in player dot droids. I should say droid droid in player dot droids. And it wants the game object. So let's actually name this to droid object. And in this loop, we're going to say droid droid equals droid object dot get component type droid. And then just for the sake of defensive programming, even though we know these are going to be droids, I'm going to say if droid is not equal null, then we're going to create a new droid data object. So droid data data equals a new droid data and we're going to pass in droid. This will go through and initialize a new object with the serialized data the way that we need it. And then we're just going to say droids dot add droid or data rather. Cool. That's it for setting it up for saving and loading. Now let's head back to Unity and we're going to open up the player class. So double click on the player script. And with that open in our IDE, we're going to go to the very bottom and we're going to add a couple of functions. But actually, before we do that, I'm going to go up and add one more private variable to our player class. I'm going to say private string path equals. Actually, we're not going to assign it just yet because that'll throw an error. So we're just going to say private string path. And then down in the start function, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to say path equals application dot persistent data path plus quotation mark slash player dot DAT. Okay. Now that we're set up to use a path, we're going to create a function and it's going to be private void save. And I'm not going to spend too much time going into the whys all of this works. Just know that this is the commonly accepted way to save data in Unity for larger objects and stuff that we don't want hanging out readily available in the preferences. We're just going to say binary formatter EF equals new binary formatter and then file stream file equals file dot create path. And then we're going to say player data data equals new player data. And we're going to pass in this. And then we'll say BF dot serialize file and data are what we're going to pass in. And then we're going to close the file because that's good practice. And we don't want to keep the file open any longer than we need to because it can cause a lot of problems. Then we're going to go and create private void load. And this is going to be pretty similar, but
But first, we're going to check and make sure that the file path exists. So if file.exists path, then binary formatter bf equals new binary formatter file stream file equals file dot open path and then file mode dot open player data equals player data data equals and we're gonna cast what we're assigning to player data that's going to be bf.deserialize file. And then file.close as we're done with the file. And then we just need to go ahead and assign all of this data. We're going to say xp equals data.xp. Required xp equals data.required xp level base equals data dot level base and then level equals data dot level and then this is where we would set up the droids to load up as well but i'm going to leave that to you as a student challenge when we're done with the rest of our game so i'm just going to put a comment in for now saying import player droids most of the work is there for you. It's just there as an extra exercise to help you flex your brain a little bit. And then we're going to say outside of the if statement, else. So if we have nothing to load, init level data. And that's it. Our player now saves and loads. And let me prove that to you. We are going to go ahead and save player data every time we add XP. So at the end of the add XP function, we're going to say save. And we're going to add it to the add droids as well. So save there at the end of the add droid function. And then we're going to scroll up to the start function. And instead of calling init level data, we're going to call load. And now what's going to happen is when the player first loads up, it's going to attempt to load that data. And if that doesn't work, then it'll just init the player data. So we'll have a brand new player. Let's save and go back to Unity. And we're going to press play. Now, I've already got a little bit of experience from when I was testing just a minute ago. So I've got 20 experience. But just to show you that it's working, I'm going to click on XP and XP, and one more. So I now have 50 experience. And we're going to stop running the game. And then when we start again, I'm going to have 50 experience and be at level one. Boom. Perfect. See that? How cool is that? We are now saving and loading player data. Awesome. We've really come a long way here. So great job following along. I'm going to go ahead and save and call this video good. Again, awesome job. We are just about there. This is Ben with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.